Welcome back to WNST, Tass in Baltimore and Baltimore Positive, Positively by week Election Week, World Series Week, and almost Steelers Week here in Baltimore as uh, we sort of round the turn here and eat the pumpkin spice latte to Harker Brothers ice cream and await Halloween and await an election. A lot of folks are on a little nervous edge, but you know, I keep good financial friends around me, good sports friends around me, people that can talk me out of the tree about the Dodgers winning the World Series. Hey, we're in Dodger Blue this week. That's good for um, the Dodgers and Tampa. Leonard Raskin here for Raskin Global. You can find him out at the front of the new Baltimore Positive, of course, at Raskin Global. I've known him a long time. Uh, it's good to have him here as a part of our weekly conversation. And uh, first things first, man, we're going to talk election and money and Trump and Biden and the, the pandemic and all that. The football season's fun when you win, isn't it? I mean, even when it's close against Philadelphia, it's still – there's a little part of it, if you're a thrill seeker, that Sunday's better than, like, winning 45-6 to six every week. It seemed kind of seemed kind of odd. All of a sudden, we were back to the old Ravens where you had to wait till the last – second to put it away it was just a a typical old style raven game like usually we're, we're up seven we're up three we're you know in the past back in the i guess the joe days i would say in the joe days it was always close it was it was always a heart attack like every week you didn't know what was going to happen and and let's face it well you knew tucker was going to make the field goal you always knew that yeah yeah you always knew was that. It the last uh, unfortunately the last game of almost every season was like down to the last play or two and it was gut wrenching. So I, I like the uh, the blowout games. I like the the big win. I like Lamar sitting on the bench for the fourth quarter. I'm all about that. You know, people say, "Oh, that's not a good game." I said, "Well, that's because you're on the losing side." I'm sorry, but because <laughs> we had more I'm, fun in the first quarter than you did. <laughs> that's, that's right. I mean, I I like the big the big kapow, but but you know, look, a win's a win. And and I'll tell you, uh, Thursday. Thursday night, Thursday afternoon, I guess it was, I, I sent a text to a buddy of mine in Philly, and I said, uh, how about dinner? We bet the game for dinner. He checks me back with, what, how many points are you giving me? I said, dude, this ain't Vegas. This is dinner. Straight up. Your boys against my boys. He says, uh, I think Vegas is given seven and a half. I said, I'll give you three and a half. So I, I offered three and a half. He wouldn't take it. I think the he line went seven. to like 10 or something, didn't it? I, he, I don't know wanted, enough about Vegas, but. I don't either. I don't either. He wanted seven and a half, but I offered three and a half. And he said no. And he was actually at the game in Philly. He was there. And uh, he was texting me. We're texting back and forth during the game. But, you know, the bet never happened. But he did, he'd have done it at three and a half. You know, it was a two-point win. You going to make him and take it, you to the back fan up there or something like that down at yeah, Chris down here? I said to him, bottom, bottom line is you can't lose. The only difference is who's picking up the check. It's not a lose bet. Who cares? Go out to dinner with some friends. You know, we get to good. hang out and talk about the, the next time the Flyers play the Capitals or something. That's right. right. It's all good. It's all good. The next Phillies uh, O's World Series maybe. <laughs> My wife made me a run out for a special Chinese food in, in uh, Midtown Philly after the game. And, you know, things are so weird with these Zoom press conferences, you know. Uh, oh. You know, Coach Harbaugh and I were trying to connect this week, and it didn't happen. And that's cool. And, you know, I'm just happy they're winning. I'm happy that people are engaged with the games on Sunday. You know, I've gone to three of these games now, Houston, Washington, Philadelphia. Luke's doing the home games. I'm doing the road games. I have a flight to Indianapolis in two weeks. I have a flight to New England um, that I adjusted because I'm not going to be hanging out of the North End having pasta or anything on this trip. But, but, but yeah, I mean. switch up now that they're letting some fans in maybe? Well, I don't know. You know, I, 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 I don't <laughs> – Letting the fans in, Leonard, I, I know you're, you said your pal went to the game and all. I don't know. I kind of felt sorry for the people paying to be there where it's like half an experience. You know, it's not really a full experience. And I'm not being Debbie Downer in a five-way. Look, it's great that we're having a good time. But I have said to my wife, I don't – and I don't want to be jaded. You know what I mean? Because they're going to yeah. let me in in Indianapolis. They're going to let me in in New England. They're going to let me in. They might not let anybody else in, but they're going to let me in, right? No matter who wins the election, right? I mean, they're going to let me in. <laughs> and but I have a flight and I don't really it hasn't been fun I mean in the beginning I wasn't like sad about it now I went like the Eagles wives were sitting in front of us in Philadelphia and you could see by the jersey numbers and who they were and they were like all sequestered and there were little groups of fours and six and twos 
and it, I don't know. It'd be like being separated in a high school game. You know what I mean? Like nobody's near anybody. It's it not really like, loud. It looked like a lot of people were there. And then, and then when they shot the close up, it was like two people in between 20 cardboards. Right. It was, it was like major <laughs> league two. Remember major league two when they <laughs> shot was, that here? It was so bizarre. <laughs> it just looked so bizarre. Yeah. I, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. I'm not interested one bit. It's like, no thanks. But uh, Hey, like you said, a win's a win. Five and one's five and one. I'll take it. I'll take 15 and one. I don't care if we win by two, three, or 20. I guess the point of what I'm trying to make is a full crowd is really different. You know, I had JY from Sticks on this week, right? And, and we talked about like sitting in your bedroom and making music for a camera and how different that is than being on stage at Merriweather. And like hey, you know watching what? baseball now with a couple of people there as well. It does. Bizarre. It sounds like a May baseball game, right? It doesn't sound like the yeah, World bad Series. Bad preseason ball or something. Talking talk about sticks. Quick story. Go ahead. My first first ever concert at the Civic Center in Baltimore was Sticks a hundred years ago. Was that the Paradise Theater Cornerstone? What, uh, what show was that? I couldn't even tell you. So long ago, you know, back in the what was it seventy uh, seven. Was it that long ago? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, it's talking. before my time then. Okay. Oh, no, we're talking a hundred years ago. I was like fourteen or fifteen. So so I'm there with I'm there with my girlfriend and a couple other people. I don't even remember who opened, but some you know, whoever knows. I got a, I got there a ticket stub here. You see, this, this is from 81, okay? So this, this was no, in the front was, row, and I talked to JY uh, about this one. But go ahead, Leonard. I want to hear your so story. This, no, it sticks. This, this was in the se- late 70s, so I'm at the Civic Center. Intermission, we go out for our soft pretzel and Coke because we couldn't drink anything, you know, back in the day. And uh, come back to the, to the seat, seating bowl there at the Civic Center, and a guy, a big guy, this guy, is in my seat. Oh, man. I'm, I'm like 14. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. This guy's God, wearing leather and stuff like that. I got right, my little girl. Bit. This guy's got, you know, the whole thing going on. I'm like, you're, excuse me. Excuse me. You're in my seat. <laughs> Sorry, sir. That's my ticket. Right. He, he pulls out his ticket. Sure enough, I'm in the wrong section. Oh, no. Oh, God. I was going to get pounded for nothing. So, you know what? I'm going to share this one with you. This, this is, this you is how Cap far Center. back ago with sticks. So, this is, if you, can, if you remember the Capitol Center, oh, absolutely. this is second, section two, row B, seat right. two. This was second row dead center, right? Look at the, look at the price. Twelve fifty. This was the Kilroy was was here tour. That was a lot of money, twelve. That's really cool that we share sticks because, like, through the years, oh, yeah. and now I don't. Can can I share? You know, I'm gonna share something with you that that might be fun. And then Leonard Raskin is here. Tell everybody what you do because I was always, always fun having like friends on the show and people I do business with. I'm wearing my Raskin Global shirt and all that. But but more than that, uh, you know, I love promoting your business. But then there's like all of these things where like we share music and sports and events and Baltimore and crab cakes and times and memories and parades and all this stuff together. And that's kind of what I'm trying to put together at Baltimore Positive right now. And I think that's what you're trying to do with your firm as well. Absolutely. We are uh, a fee-based financial consulting firm. We're pretty unique in this space. Uh, a lot of people out there in the financial advice world talk about giving advice and that their world is giving advice. And unfortunately for their clients, their advice ends up in their products all the time. And whether that's investments or insurance or whatever it may be, they have a motive to what they're trying to do. Uh, We charge a fee for the wisdom that you get when we talk to you about your financial world. Our goal is to help you achieve your American dream. First of all, to get people to recognize the American dream is not dead. A lot of people think it's gone, buried. You know, we we talked a little bit about politics. People think that uh, the middle class is shrinking. And, And the fact is, if you look at the data, the lower middle class is shrinking, but oddly enough, it's not getting poorer. The upper middle class is getting richer, and the new rich are getting more plentiful. And yes, the rich are getting richer, but the good news is, in our country, the poor are getting out. They're getting to be more lower upper middle class. And the beauty of America, (laughs) bottom line is, there is no caste system here. You can be born dirt poor and end up loaded rich and you can end you can be born rich and end up dirt poor there is no precast destiny in this country and our goal is to take anybody that wants to talk about it bring them to our firm 
explain to them how they can achieve their American dream and help them understand that when they recognize what their true purpose for money is, when they recognize that it's not about just having more of it, but it's about what you do with it. It's about how you enjoy life with it. Look, I don't have to tell anybody, look at you. I mean, you, you had this situation a few years ago with your wife. My God, you almost lost her. It, it wasn't about piling up more money for the sake of someday we're going to retire maybe and have a life. It's Life is right now. There is no dress rehearsal here. So figure out what's important. Allocate your money appropriately. Invest it appropriately. Protect it wisely. And go on about living the greatest American life you can live. And, and that's what we're about telling people. And we do that for a fee based on their financial circumstance to help get them in order, get their financial life and house in order. And then we work with them to make sure they're protected properly, invested properly, uh, that things are going on in their world the way that they hope and want them to be. And uh, we've been doing it for 33 years. Uh, we're right in Hunt Valley. These days we do a lot of Zoom, we're, we're remote, we're able to meet with people remote. We do uh, webinars on a consistent basis. If you find us on Facebook, Raskin Global, if you find us on LinkedIn at Raskin Global, the events that we're doing, you'll see them out there and the opportunity to, to connect with us and, and get on board with what's really important to you about your money. That's what it's all about. Well, I know you're proud of your website, and I'm featuring it, the team, and what you do, and financial balance, and really a, a resource guide here for uh, all things you would want to talk about, estate and investment. And these are like, when you sit down, these are the things you're going to be going through and talking to them about. And uh, so get out there, raskinglobal.com. I wear the shirt. Uh, I, you know, sometimes I shake up the investments around here, uh, as you guys know. I, Leonard, I want to show you the new website here, because uh, the sticks yeah. piece is up now, right? So we're turning to paradise during a play with JY sticks. That's kind of neat. We have the search bar up here and you just put in sticks, right? And we have a music classic as well and a music bar, all the music, David Bowie, Bon Jovi, uh, you know, Clarence Clemens, all my chats with, uh, with Nils Lofgren. But these are all of my chats with sticks over the years. So this is 2020. It's a brand new one after almost half a century on the road. What happens when a band has too much time on its hands? Do you see what I did yeah. there, Leonard? Do you see what there I did you there? Go. You like that? Uh, and, uh, so um, JY and I, this is from 2000. 15 that picture but just did this piece this week Todd Suckerman the drummer from Sticks, came on uh, two months ago so I had a piece there with him this is JY uh, me being a fanboy yep. and talking about that second <laughs> row ticket Leonard uh, I camped out for two nights with Ron Zakowski, my high school chum, Ron West, from my band, from Ridgemont High. Now, now and was that, that at uh, the Cap Center? Was Cap that Center, yeah. Kilroy was here tour. So th this piece that we did this time, the, the one here, if you click on this one right here, we talk about this picture of the time yeah. that, 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 uh, that we were together at the Super Bowl and Don King uh, yeah. was pretending that, he knew who JY was. So, uh, right. and this is JY at the Super. This was our Super Bowl. This is a 2000, uh, 2001. This was the Tampa Super Bowl. Right. And uh, so, anyway, uh, you know, all these, there's Tommy Shaw, and there's all the rock and roll stuff here. And of course, if you, if you wait long enough, somewhere in here, there's going to be a, a, a Raskin Global uh, 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 a bar and all the yeah, stuff that beautiful. we do. By the way, who's this good looking guy here? Look at this, there huh? There you go. There you go. Huh? What effect Golden. will the election have on your money? That's last week's Great piece. Great question. Then. Great question. And the answer is it's irrelevant in the, in the long term. It can have a little blip in the short term. But you know what? Your investments are about investing for the long term. And history shows us one thing. Markets don't care who's in the White House. Markets don't care who's in Congress. If companies produce products and services that people want, Stocks go up, and over time, stocks go up, and you shouldn't make any investment decisions pre or post based on the election outcome. It would be a fool's game. It's what we call timing the market, and that is a patent no-no, speculating and gambling with your money, trying to guess when to get in and when to get out, whether it's the election or the pandemic or anything else. Look, uh, you don't have to go too far. We were talking about the... Uh, the Vegas spread and the, and the Ravens Eagles, the hardest thing about predicting the future is uh, it's the future. And so it, it's, it's impossible to be done. If somebody could do it, uh, what was it? Uh, back to the future. Was it two before they got really out of control 
or three, I don't know which one it was, where Biff got the, the, the sports book and the pass, took it to the pass. Yeah, but nobody would be coming to 2020, you know, unless right. they could really could speculate on what's going to happen five years from now well, in the could, market, right? You, you could, what's called short the market back in, in February. You know, you could bet against the market because you knew the pandemic was coming. And, and well, get I can mention and, Kelly Leffler, but I'm going to leave that alone until after the election, all hey, right? Hey, you know, she, she was among a few. And, and uh, if you believe she bet against the market, then – God bless, you know, then she should be out of the out of the House or out of the Senate. She's a senator. She should be out. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, I don't think anybody saw what was coming as dreadful as it was. Nobody at the bottom of the market back in March saw the recovery of the stock market being so rapid as it has been. And anybody that says they saw it lies. Well, I'll tell you what, I appreciate you telling me the truth. I appreciate the investments and the nice shirt. Uh, in perfect, you know, you can't predict the future, but I think the Dodgers are going to win. Oh, they, <laughs> they are looking good. They are looking good. Well, they good. got the They're... local kid. You know, Don Moeller's family knows Kalarik real well. And, uh, you know, his dad has done this wonderful charity here that everybody should go out. Uh, you, you, talk, you know what? I'm going to promote my website right now because, uh, well, I, you know what? I'm not. I, tell, go Frank Kalarik. Check out what they do. Uh, we had him on last Christmas. But his boy's number 56, and he pitches for the Dodgers. He's from Catonsville. So there's a good reason to be a Dodgers fan. Yeah, Tampa, that, right? Tampa Bay. See, here, here's the thing. Tampa Bay won the Stanley Cup. They've won enough. But they, now, L.A. Now, won, the, won, won, won the NBA, though, right? No, I get it. Now, now they're in the World Series, right? L.A. Tampa. So you're going to have a repeat winner somewhere. And then, God forbid, you get, like, the Buccaneers playing something. Oh, no, 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 no. How horrible no, would no, that no, be? No, no, no. Would they wear their throwback if they if if they ever play in a Super Bowl with Tom Brady? They should the wear creamsicle. Their creamsicle. creamsicle, creamsicle, the absolutely. They, they should, should go with the sombrero absolutely. look, is what they. Yeah. Leroy <laughs> Salmon, baby. Boy, hey man, I appreciate you, Leonard. Tell everybody how to get in touch Tampa with you. Tampa in Tampa. How would that be? <laughs> What's the best way to get in touch? Just on the website contact form or uh, you personally. You can go to the you. contact form right on uh, raskinglobal.com if you want to send an email and get some information. You can go to info at raskinglobal.com. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on LinkedIn. We're all over the place. And like you said, that resource center is what we talk about. And uh, we're here in Baltimore, Hunt Valley. We're in Bethesda. And we have clients in 25 states around the country. So if you want to make better decisions about your money, we're the place to talk. You know, I love the two weeks ago we played the, the Washington football team. And you yeah. sort of made a side reference to – have some friends down there. <laughs> hey, you know, it's not often Baltimore and Washington get together and do this. Not often that Philadelphia and Baltimore get together and do this, right? So, hey, that's we've it. won two battles, man. That's two flags in the ground. And when we go down to Ocean City, as long as we beat the Steelers next week, we get rid of all of them for, for at least a little while, right? Hey, how great. How great. Of, I mean, look, I think they got to play better to, to beat Pittsburgh the way Pittsburgh's playing. But I think it's, it's certainly doable. Like you rise to the occasion. A little wake-up call, and you know this with your money from time to time, a little shock and scare and awe when you survive it. You come out at the Focus. other end with a lesson Focus. learned. So hopefully, That's you know, it. right? Focus. That's what they got to do. Leonard, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on with us each Pleasure. and every week. We'll see you at Baltimore Positive. We'll see you at RaskinGlobal.com. And I certainly will see you next week for some Steelers talk, all right? You got it. You got it. Leonard Raskin, RaskinGlobal.com. They do it for you and, uh, and protect you. And, uh, and, and, and give you the proper advice. Find out all of their services at raskinglobal.com. And you can just go out there and read before you even contact them. Uh, you've heard them. You've seen the ads. Always kicking around with the Ravens and local things and the local issues. Always good to have him here as part of our conversation as well. We've expanded the conversation as we've shown you out on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn and all of the places that we've moved from WNST.net AM 1570 to Baltimore Positive. Stick around. By week short, the Steelers are coming.